escaping the people-pleasing, trying harder trap. In this video, I'm going to explain why you probably need to try less hard rather than more, why it can be difficult to change course sometimes, even when you know you should, and give you three simple exercises that you can do to help yourself turn things around. So when you're stuck in a people-pleasing cycle, you can find that you're missing out on things that would nourish you and help you grow. You can start to train other people into treating you as badly as you're treating yourself. And perhaps worst of all, you can be sending messages to yourself through your own behavior that you're not worth looking after. Now you might have spotted this, but if you're a conscientious, dutiful kind of person, there's a temptation to keep plowing on and keep trying harder. Maybe part of you thinks that if you just carry on being kind enough to people for long enough, then they'll change and start being the same way to you. Or that if you're nice enough to people and nice enough to enough people, then things are gonna suddenly turn around and change or people are going to like repay the favor to you. Now, perseverance can be a good thing if you're going in the right direction. If you're going in the wrong direction, then just carrying on doing more and more of it is just going to send you further and further off track. In that case, what you need to do is to slow down, stop, turn around and start making your way back to where you want to be. So why do people carry on with a people pleasing behavior, even when it's harming them and even when they kind of half know how damaging it can be. I'm going to give you three reasons and then I'll give you some ways in which you can start loosening them and changing them. The first one is a hair of the dog syndrome. So heavy drinkers sometimes have an alcoholic drink in the morning to try to ease their hangover from the night before. Now that might make them feel better right there and then, but it also kicks off another cycle of drinking. Now, if you're feeling bad about yourself, then jumping in to help someone makes you feel better for a bit. But it also can embed that more, start off that uh, damaging cycle again. So like that drug, you feel good at the time, even when it's doing you harm in the long run. And it's worth acknowledging that just like coming off a drug, then as you start kicking this habit, you might find that you have like urges that are compelling you and make you want to jump in and still help and rescue people. And the more comfortable you can begin to feel around those urges, the less they'll be controlling you and sending you back to uh, that old behavior that you don't want. The more you relax, the easier it's going to be to change. And the second reason is chasing losses. So when gamblers talk about chasing losses, they mean that they've placed a bet and it's they've lost on it, it's gone wrong, um, but then they feel compelled to place more and more bets to try to win the money to make up for what they lost. But of course, what happens is they don't win, they lose even more and lose even more and lose even more and get more and more in that cycle. And of course that happens here too. Like maybe if you've um, invested in the wrong kind of relationships, or if you've rested in perfectly decent relationships, but you've just invested them in them in the wrong way, then turning away from that can be quite difficult. But the more you avoid the challenge and difficulty of facing up to that loss, the deeper in trouble you're gonna get. So if you can just be aware of that uh, natural human loss aversion that makes us try to avoid looking at a loss, and then you can begin to square up to it and face up to it and feel bad for it, and then start making things better, then that's gonna help you. And the uh, third uh, reason is a fear of loss of identity. So if you've like being told for years and years, maybe since you were a child, how 
kind and helpful you are and how caring you are, then part of you might have become quite attached to that as, as your identity, as if that's who you are as a person. So if you start trying to change that and play with it, that part of you can get quite stressed out about it and uh, try to keep dragging you back as if that's all you are. So the thing here is to start reminding yourself of all the other things you are. I'm sure you are kind and caring and helpful and you're more than that too. So what can you do? So remember, we're looking for small steps and consistent change. Think of it like exercise. Uh, you wanna choose some things to do that are going to challenge you a bit. So it's not something that's completely in your comfort zone, but not something that's overwhelming either. Just something that's a little bit of a stretch for you. I'm gonna give you some ideas. Choose whatever you like from these. So the first one is around uh, expanding your identity. You can, the way you can do this is to start listing for yourself qualities that you appreciate in yourself that are nothing to do with being kind and caring and helpful. So maybe you're good at cooking or you're organized or you're brilliant at maths or you can dance or you can draw or you're good at sports or whatever it is or you're funny. Whatever those things are, just start making a list for yourself so you can begin to recognize that although you are kind and caring and helpful and that's lovely, you are also more than that. The second thing is to do one less thing for the world today or this week, the world will manage, I promise you. So some ways into that can be just to notice when people are asking for help or they're asking for volunteers and to practice just sitting with it when that happens. Now you might feel that urge to join in and to volunteer and to help, even if it's gonna harm you. Uh, so in that case, I just want you to notice that feeling and sit with that discomfort and feel as comfortable as you can with that urge there inside you, just like a smoker who's trying to stop smoking or something like that. And as the more comfortable you can feel, the more that's gonna to begin to change. Second way into it could be to uh, renegotiate an obligation that you already have. So maybe there's something you do every week, but it's actually, it's too much for you. So you can contact the person and say, hey, you know what? I know I've been doing this, but it's too much for me. I don't really have time. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do it anymore. So that's the, that's the challenging one, right? Or an easier one, if it's not like a time critical thing, is um, some areas where you might have obligations to help people. You might've promised someone you'd do something for them but you can engage in what I call constructive procrastination. So you are gonna do those things, but you're not going to push all your priorities aside and immediately put theirs first. You're just gonna take it, and instead of doing it straight away, you're gonna leave that till tomorrow, or the next day, or the weekend, or whenever it is, so that's gonna allow a bit more space for things that are important to you. So if you choose one of those three things, what you're gonna find is you've got possibly more money and certainly more energy and time that you've saved from that, which you can use for the third exercise, which is to do one kind thing for yourself with that time and energy. And that could be in one of two areas. So it could be in the most obvious area, which is like the pampering indulgent kind of thing, where you, uh, do something that's pleasurable for yourself. So maybe you have a bath or you go for a walk or you read a book or you go to bed early or whatever it is that you just really enjoy that would be nourishing for you. But there's another area that is not uh, often talked about. Another way in which you can be kind to yourself is doing something that might be less fun in the moment, but which can be kind to a future you. So that might be um, tidying your house or uh, taking the first steps on a project you've been meaning to do or uh, doing some exercise, that kind of thing. So you're being kind to yourself, you're being kind to that future you. So just be aware that there's, you've got two areas there that you can take those steps in. When you start doing that, then you can start 
acting and living your way in to being kinder to yourself and a better friend to yourself. So take it easy. We're looking for small, consistent steps. This can feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes as you let go of that uh, approval drug that perhaps you've been living on a bit. So you might have a bit of a come down. That's why you want to be gentle around it. But as you start building in those new habits, then you can start becoming as good a friend to yourself as you are to everybody else.